DC's number one recording studio. Oh. Thursday night tea. Thursday night tea. Thursday night tea. It's Thursday night tea with Anthony. Thursday night tea. Thursday night tea. Thursday night tea. It's Thursday night tea with Anthony. Thursday night tea. Beautiful people, make some noise! Beautiful people! Shout out to the ugly people! Welcome to Thursday Night Tea with Anthony. We are here live in the Capitol. Give it up for D, uh, the DMV! We're here at Listen Vision Studios. Yo, we have an amazing show today. Um, FYI, I'm doing a Kickstarter. I'm going to take this to the next level for Thursday Night Tea. Um, go and get my LLC so I can hire some interns so they can get college credit to help me with the show because I just cannot do it anymore by myself. I got the wrong date. My guest, Nikki, is coming next week for the Comfort Zone. Give it up for Nikki. Yeah. She'll be here next week. Um, and... I might bring Michelle back for my co-host again because, hey, she's got it like that. Uh, we're going to go pay these bills right quick, and we'll be right back with more Thursday Night Tea with Anthony. Welcome to Lock Love Salon. We're located at 402 8th Street Northeast, Washington, D.C., right in the heart of the Capitol. Come in. Let me introduce you. Welcome to Lock Love Salon. We here at Lock Love are an award-winning natural hair care salon that focuses on natural hair care and lock artistry. We believe in the inherent beauty of natural hair and take a more of an educational, holistic approach to natural hair to preserve hair quality and assure healthy growth. We have an in-salon marketplace stocked to the core full of essential products to promote healthy hair, which we also use ourselves. All of our stylists are well versed in all things natural hair care. Locks, extensions, flat twist updos, kid styles. We are here to promote your best you. Come to Lock Love so you can be locked in love and we'll see you beyond the red door. Welcome back, we are here. Welcome with Anthony, with Michelle E. <laughs> Yo, just in case you didn't know, me and uh, Michelle and I share the same birthday, December, December 10th. the 10th, Sagittarius. Oh my God, we're twins. Oh. <laughs> Yo, yes. I love Michelle. She's amazing. She's an amazing producer, comedian, writer, host, all of it. She does it all, and Thank she's you. awesome at it. <laughs> Thank um, you. Wh where are you from? Originally, I'm from Jersey. Okay, Jersey girl in the I house. Am <laughs> South Jersey. No one knows about South Jersey. Oops. Okay. I am. I am. Um. Uh. Oh, Western Philadelphia, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but you're within the Garden State. Yes, I within am. the Garden. I used to live in Jersey City. Oh yeah. Um, for three, oh. it was right outside of Manhattan. It I was. I'm so sorry. Oh, <laughs> I, I, but see, I liked was it, it. Nice. It was nice. Um, I'm from North Carolina, so yeah. it was like. Uh, I worked in the city, so then I would come home, and it would kind of oh, be nice. like that's home, good. back that's home, mm -hmm. um, but not because they had <laughs> bodegas on every corner. But um, there's no bodegas in North Carolina. What? No, <laughs> they're they're like corner stores, but they definitely don't. Call, I don't think there's a high enough um, Latino Hispanic population yes. to call them bodegas. On the corner stores in North Carolina, were there cats that lived next to the bread aisle? Were there cats? <laughs> no, you didn't. Like Tom and Jerry cats? A regular cat. Like usually you go to a bodega, there's a, at least one or two bodega cats. Well, they have to because <laughs> in the highly metropolitan areas, there are a lot of mice and rats, I feel Correct. like. So that's why yeah. in North Carolina, they just eat the mice. They don't, oh, okay. the cats, yeah. They're cool. All right. Mice do. All right, so yes, definitely corner, <laughs> corner store, not a bodega. No. Because they're not cats or rice or mice. Uh, have you ever seen Cats, the Broadway musical? No, I, I saw I saw like um um like a video of one of the songs once. It's so would, it looks weird. It does look weird. <laughs> like what? Like, that, like why was this a thing? Adult cats like in cat costumes. It, do, it does it's seem weird. weird which that is, means you know what? No one should really um, feel like they can't do something in entertainment. You know what I mean? Somebody wrote a whole musical. About cats. About cats with grown people in cat Memories costumes. That's your thing. All alone in the moonlight. So beautiful. And that so you realize they're talking about cats. 
Yes. <laughs> Meow. Uh, <laughs> yo, uh, before I get started, I want to say, um, well, oh my God, first and foremost, Corey Bynum, um, thank you for tuning in and congratulations oh. on your new kidney. Oh my what? God. Yeah. So much got a new kidney. I know. I mean, he just tuned in. I just saw the other day that he just got. <laughs> nice. um, I know. <laughs> Congrats, dear heart. I know you've been waiting long for it. Uh, I love you so much and I'm so glad that um, you were able to get that done. What, what up, is Joseph? Jesus. Uh, Joseph is um, a. Host at Buzz Boys and Poets. Oh, nice. Yeah, an amazing award winning uh, poet who is going to uh, also be on the show uh, next week. Nice. So I want to say rest in peace to my Aunt Ruby. Yeah. Um, oh, God, Aunt Ruby. Oh, I miss you already. So Love those glasses. Oh, Look at that. Yo, Aunt Ruby was so spicy. She was so sassy. <laughs> but most of all, Aunt Ruby was so nosy. She knew mm. everybody's tea. Like, that's why nobody could mess with her because she knew all the tea. You know what I'm saying? You know people like that? Like, don't say something. Right. Like, say something and I'll tell I will it let all. all of it spill. What was? Oh, God. I feel like she was a Capricorn. Or maybe. Or oh, no, maybe. Wait a minute. Was Aunt Ruby a Sagittarius? I feel like her. Uh, late November, early December, then Sagittarius. I feel like, yeah, because I'm Sagittarius. We're Sagittarius. We the same are. day. Yeah, December 10th. Oh, what? Yes. Instantly. Um, but she always, first and foremost, she had the wettest sugar of all of my family. Wow. Me and my cousins used to always talk about, it, like, Aunt Ruby got the wettest sugar. What does that mean? I'm so sorry. Like <laughs> I'm every, from the north. Well, she had vitiligo, <laughs> so her face would sweat a lot. So uh -huh. when she kissed you, oh, she would sugar. make sure she got all of your. She would be like, "Come here, baby, and get all, all the, the sweat." sweat. Yeah. Oh, her sugar you. was wet. Her sugar I got was it. I got wet, it. I got but it was it good. She had good sugar. <laughs> she had good sugar. Um, but she was the pound cake. Queen. I'm from nice. I'm from Mount Airy, North Carolina, mm -hmm. the home of Mayberry, Andy Griffith. Mm -hmm. So I mean, her pound cakes were. Just, I mean, they would melt in your mouth. They were so, so flavorful, butter, so moist. And, mm -hmm. Oh my God, she was the pound cake queen, and also she was the deviled egg ruler. Oh, good. Like her deviled eggs. You can't just eat anybody's deviled eggs. No. <laughs> no, they don't have the... No, it's too many pickles. It's not enough mayo. Too mm -hmm. much mayo. A dab of mustard. It's too much this. One Paprika. time we let deviled eggs go out of our immediate family to share for Thanksgiving. Um, the person who brought it put ketchup in it. Why are you putting ketchup in your deviled egg mixture? Why are they still alive? Uh, mm. Like throw the whole person away. And just throw them all the way in the garbage. <laughs> like, like we did them deviled eggs. I mean, because who's yeah, you that? did do who's them to that? death. Oof, Yo, terrible. that's crazy. But shout out to Aunt Ruby. Uh, Yay, I love Aunt you forever. Um, shout out to all my family. I'm super bummed that I couldn't uh, attend the funeral, um, but we all know why. And yeah. I just love you all. And sh shout out to Aunt Ruby. Awesome. So, yay, yes. to Aunt Ruby. <laughs> Um, let's see. We have some crazy topics today. Topics that are going, that people are discussing all over the country uh, and worldwide. Mm. Some of them are just like, this first topic, you know, you just get to, to a point. Throw me un into a deep depression with these topics. Go ahead. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna try to. We're gonna try to like spice it up a little bit. But it's so much stuff going on. It's so crazy, and this is one of the craziest. It's insane. Yo, shout out to my cousin Denise Smith. Hey, cuz I missed you. I missed you too today. I love you too. Give everybody my love and get all the sugar. You know I love sugar. All the sugar. Um. <laughs> First up to bat, the border crisis. Oh, my God. Um, as we all know, kids are being ripped from their parents. I cannot imagine. I didn't even want to go. Look at those pictures. Ah. This is inhumane. The, the ones that you use in space. It's like for space flight. Like the shiny aluminum. It's I mean, I didn't even want to go to school without my mom. You know what I'm saying? When I was a youngster, just imagine. It's just, it's just unfathomable. Not really. It shouldn't be unfathomable because, I mean, that's what it is. I mean, they are allowed legally to do it. So clearly it's been done before. So, um, but what is just, for that to be happening and then no people aren't feeling immediate, like, no, 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 you can't do it. It's like now, 
I mean, United States was not always the most beloved in the world, but like we're totally like the evil superpower. Like if there was a if there was some sort of superhero movie, we would definitely be on the wrong end of Superman. Like we are the evil <laughs> villains, hands down. And so it's like, uh, and I can't even wrap my mind around the fact that these parents couldn't be with their children. I just, I just, that's something that I couldn't really. But you have children, right? Yes, See, I can't I even. Imagine. I don't have kids, but I can't fathom. Right. I can't like what is said. Fathom, you know, tearing children away from their parents at the border. I mean, some of them don't even speak the language, so it's like just imagine you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. All you know is that you're. Yeah, they would have had to lock me up. Oh, they would have right. had to shoot me. I'm sorry. Yeah, definitely because mm -hmm. um, I I was telling um some uh, uh, Asia and Jack earlier, uh, some, a few of the interns here that people are saying, oh, this is so not America. I mean, when you really it's think totally about is. it, it actually it is. is so America. That's what we do. That's how this country was founded: tearing children away from their families. Um, but let's turn the page. Let's turn and change the narrative. Mm -hmm. History is repeating itself right. all over again. Mm -hmm. It's just a different race. Right. Um, it's so super it's unfortunate. Tough. Yeah, it's it tough. is. Just... I heard that. Um, and then Trump signed the executive order after saying that he couldn't do anything about it. Right. Oh, I can't. My hands are tied. It's a lot. We already know that he's a liar. Mm -hmm. Liar, liar, pants on fire. Um, so, yeah, that, that's the issue. The issue that, that like... So, like, stay woke, people. So yes. he signs this order, and they're not ripping people away, but children away. But how are they going to fix the kids that uh, the families are already uh, torn they apart? Can't. And then how are they going to? And then how are they going to make sure? What's a new order to to take that? Like, that's not a possibility anymore. They won't say that it won't. It's not a possibility to do anymore because if they do that, then those families have a leg up to uh, uh, sue on, on an international level because of what happened. So they're. They're not going to do anything that's going to put themselves and their own reputation in jeopardy. And he puts things and, and has things happen. And then he changes the things that he has happen and then makes himself look like a hero. You're not yeah. a hero. No. And people see past the BS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like it's ridiculous. Deal. It is definitely ridiculous. I saw earlier that um, Melania Trump uh, went down to the border <laughs> to see, talking about she wanted to see for herself to make sure it was real. Yes, that's happening. It's happening, girl. All right, girl, just because you, you slipped know through the border. Girl. Yeah, just because you slipped through the border doesn't mean that it's not actually happening. Really? It's um, ridiculous. Wake up, Melania. She and woke. <laughs> I feel like she's just trying to buy time till she leave she anyway. She is. She's just trying to get those four years under her belt. <laughs> Yeah. What up, Tamika? Thank you so much for. I know this is weird, but she did FaceTime me from the funeral on my lunch break today. Thanks, cousin Tamika. I appreciate what? that. What? Yo, I'm just saying because funeral. I wanted to be there with my family. Okay. And I couldn't. I'm going to let that pass, though. So I'm she, let it pass. I mean, she didn't like FaceTime the body or anything, but like in the. She was like, oh, it's. And then everybody was Look like, Look at everybody. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. And I, I totally appreciate it. It made me feel a little more connected to yeah, the event. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Because I couldn't be there. Um, like Melania was there at the border um so <laughs> this is crazy i wasn't um really a fan of this rapper mm -hmm. i to be honest i really didn't know who he was until this happened mm -hmm. uh triple x temptation is that yeah, I thought I was... yeah that's it yeah i thought yeah mm -hmm. i didn't so triple x temptation um was murdered uh he was robbed and murdered the other day yep. young black man young rapper um which seems to be uh, contagious lately. A lot of young black rappers are being killed um, at the hands of violent crimes. Right. Um, they did arrest, arrest and charge someone with first degree murder. And it's different in Florida. They have a, they have a uh, first, it's like it's different between premeditated mm -hmm. and um, what is it called when you do it um, in the act? It's some, it's, yeah, Prime it's something. Or... It's something like that, mm -hmm. um, to where they're charging him. That, yeah, it's like first degree. Um, God, it's a word though that they use. I can't really. No, it's um, God, it'll come to me. But they found the guy uh, who they think is um, the killer. The killer. Uh, so hopefully that will bring some resolution to this. Um, this act, this senseless act. And, and it was, let me just say this. This is, this is, was my issue. And I got into a bit of hot water on social media. This is my thing. So yes, it's a senseless murder. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. 
that this person got shot over something ridiculous. However, the only reason I know this man's name is because I, I too, I don't follow his music at all. The only reason I know this, fan, this man's name because there was an article written about the awful things that he did to his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So the only reason I know his name is because they talked about how uh, he would abuse her, abuse her. She would try to get away. Like she didn't have a really good family support. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, and you know they were thinking that this was going to be her come up, you know, with money because he's you know up or, up and coming rapper. And so like her mom wouldn't let her move back in, so she would stay with a guy. Uh, but he was like abusing her, but not like oh they get into fights and then they would knock her around like. Mm -hmm. He uh, abused her to the point that it her her eye socket, her orbital socket is all messed up. Like she has to have surgery. Her eye was almost all the way out of her face. Wow. He tried to uh, rape her with a barbecue uh, pitchfork. Wow. Um, and then like when all this stuff was happening this during the three days. No, no, no. Uh, during this, because he talked. The, the thing of the matter is he. Talked about it in his rap? Yes. And so no. then he um, kept her for three days, wouldn't let her leave uh, the hotel room. That's where those charges kept came her for from for kidnapping. Because yes. he wouldn't let her leave. And she I had read to. read his, his, rap, his rap sheet. Right. And so, so she escaped. So that's how she survived, is because she escaped. And it's not like, you know, so it's not, I mean, he just, it's, it goes beyond like, okay, he, he was abusive and da, 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 but like this, this guy, there's something really wrong with him. Like, really? You're going to rip your baby's mama with a, with a barbecue uh, fork? You know, those big things? How many younger kids knew about him more so than I? Right. At an older age. Yeah, it's. It's crazy. And he got more, he got more um, um, uh, famous or popular because of that whole incident, because of that whole thing. And I, the, the trial still hasn't ended, but um, it's a continuing uh, a situation. And it's like, so when I saw, when I see the stars getting on there and say, R.I.P., this guy was a legend. And, and I'm like, you know what? I don't want people to dance on his grave. I don't want to be saying, hooray, he's dead, he's an awful person. That's not what I was expecting. I thought for at, at the minimum, you would say he was a troubled person and now he won't have the opportunity to get whatever, like at least at least allude to the fact that this guy was kind of a psychopath. Not there's kind of, quote, but actually There's a quote a by Vol Voltaire. Um, I don't know, Jacob, could you Google it right quick? Voltaire, it's about life and death. Respect is given to the living while the truth is given to the dead. Yeah. Um, yes, and while a person is living, you give them respect for what they're doing if they're good, and if they're dead, you just tell the truth about how this their life This is what it was. was. Just say what it was. I, then that's what I did. And how do people, how, how do women who, who have been abused, what do they think about when they see Erica Badu say, "R.I.P. You're my homeboy," uh, and that's that. And uh, how does yep. that how does that land? Look, Voltaire, to the living we owe respect, but to the dead we owe only the truth. Right. I believe that, and I think that no one was telling the, the truth. And I think that, and it's not about and it's not about des desecrating somebody's name. It's about like you, there's a whole bunch of women, especially you know young women. And what would they think if they, when they see these people that they respect, um, not even mentioning the fact that that this is this is this is what has happened, or not even alluding to the fact that this is this he has been in some trouble or whatever the case is? It would I would feel like as a person who's been abused, it would be like, see, I hope nobody with a name abuses me because I won't be safe. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's definitely a, a tragedy on both ends. Yeah. Um, and, and I would have to, yeah, that's shout out to Charles Keys because he I saw the other day he basically was saying the same thing that you were just saying. Yeah. He said he's dead but I'm still stepping on his neck for the stuff that he did to his girlfriend it's and awful. he had yeah. a lot of homophobic rants and stuff Ugh, in his it's terrible. You know, and nobody's doing that in 2018. Who's like, doing that? Oh my god, you're so dated. Um, yeah, so he had a lot of issues, and it wasn't just about like mild abuse. That guy was a psychopath, no, and was, no one's no one's talking about that. Yeah, good deal, good deal. Um, and talk about weird. This <laughs> this is so weird. So Burger King ran uh, an ad in Russia due to the World Cup that okay. wants women to get oh. impregnated <laughs> by the <laughs> World Cup players so that they can continue the lineage of World Cup players. Uh, and they get Whoppers for life. Whoppers for life. Whoppers for... Say psych. No. No, that's no. the thing. They, they apologize. 
Has to be a, a Whopper. full Whopper. Like. No fries, though. Like, no meal. No meal. Ma'am, are you considering it? No. <laughs> <laughs> and there's, they're also going to give you $47,000. They need soccer players. Yo. <laughs> it's the World Cup. Come on, it's on the world stage. Burger King is gotta play weird. <laughs> anyway, I've never... I know, it's crazy, right? I'm already getting scared. All these movies I watch, I'm starting to believe... People are crazy. Oh, Yo. look, my mom's here. Hi, Mom. <laughs> hey, Mom! Miss <laughs> Brenda! Miss <laughs> Brenda! <laughs> Um, yeah, stay away from the Burger King, Miss Brenda. Don't you, he go is, there. Nothing good. I've <laughs> always found him creepy, though. The Burger King man, yo. <laughs> but I mean, I don't really, to be honest, I don't. I'm not surprised this happened because mm -hmm. you know the Burger King used to work on that show. Uh, he used to have a show that was very popular. Um, let's see if it's on. Do we have a picture of that, Jacob, on the show that the Burger King used to work for? I think it was the Burger Family King was, Show. Was on a show. Shut up. Be yeah. quiet. So he definitely, um, yeah. Burger King. He has King. a history of being inappropriate. <laughs> and just, so you silly. know, I've never trusted the Burger King. Mm -mm. Never. Um, <laughs> but, yo, here's something happy that I love personally. Yeah. Canada is the second country to legalize marijuana. Look at that. Look at Woo! that. <laughs> Canada said, I got five on it. Had it good. Messing with that maple wow. weed. Yo, I wonder if they're going to have maple flavored weed. Did she? Did he say maple weed? I mean, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> we know that's what comes from Canada. Maple yes. <laughs> and hockey. Are they going to be selling weed at the hockey games? Oh, my God. That would be uh, uh, interesting. It would. <laughs> Canada is about to bank. Yo, they, they are have such a chill atmosphere already. Like, everyone's going to be like. Free on universal health care. Got the, got, got the health care. Got the free weed. Um, they, they don't have any of these like shootings cause you know, they got the, the, the gun laws down pat. And so it's a be good, great good. place. Your, your, your medication is for cheap. Come on. Canada's the place to be now. They're bilingual. This, they speak fr uh, French and English. French and English. If, if stuff still starts going down at the universe, at the, uh, United States. At least there's and a place that I'll like go. And I don't like maple syrup, but I'm heading right on up there, <laughs> right over across Niagara Falls. If I have to swim over Niagara Falls. Ooh. I mean, they even got a good amount of culture. They got the um, Carabana in the summer. Got like, you know, like we got the little, um, the West Indian, like a West Indian um, carnival and stuff like that. They got the Carabana. They got so Drake. They have Drake. <laughs> <laughs> gotta find out where the black people are. Gotta Yo. find out where black people are and I'm there. <laughs> Yo, shout out to K. I always tell people, um, you know, I'm from North Carolina. I grew up in Winston Salem. Mm -hmm. um, that's the home of R. J. Reynolds. Yay, we make cigarettes. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say, oh, so aluminum foil. Yeah, no. they make uh, all the. They make all of other than that. They mm -hmm. make all of the um, cigarettes. Yeah. Winston Salem's Camel. Yeah. Uh, Lord Lord is next door. They make Newports, um, Cools. All the cigarettes come from North Carolina. Wow. Okay. So that makes sense. You have all of the tobacco fields mm -hmm. in North Carolina. In Winston Salem, you have tobacco fields as far as the eye can see mm -hmm. that are not even being used because guess what? Hmm. People don't like smoking cigarettes anymore because no they one kill smokes. you. No yeah. one smokes. So no one smokes. You it's, can't smoke anywhere. It's 2018. <laughs> Nobody even does that anymore. Um, smokes cigarettes that is right um, yo if people need to start buying up this land that they use to grow tobacco yeah to yeah to turn it over and start growing these mar marijuana these hemp crops mm -hmm. because hemp is so versatile yeah. It's not just about weed and getting high and things. It's about CBD, mm -hmm. medical uh, marijuana that doesn't it doesn't have the um, psychoactive um, ingredient that yep. gets you high, but it does heal and comfort. Um, it's so many things that could come out. I just financially, yeah. How can you? Well, that's what that's the, that's what I think the next level is. I really want like people of color who have been. Um, you know, uh, overrepresented in the in the arrest when it was illegal, and they're in jail spending time because of marijuana. I want people of color to be able to um, capitalize on the fact that now it's legal, and like there's money to be made. Like, don't be don't be outside of this circle. Make sure that you get in on it if it's legal, and there is a way. Own your own business. Do what you need to do, and to make sure that we're not disenfranchised in that way. 
Yeah, speaking of weed, I don't know, Jacob, do we have a picture of the puff and paint? It's like a red flyer uh, with my face on it. No, if not, I'll check to see if we have it later. Okay, I wonder what yep. the paintings look like if they've been puffing. I don't know. <laughs> so I'm, do, I'm hosting this event on Saturday. It's in Capitol Hill. It's called Puff, Pass, and Paint. Oh. Um, so they have like vendors, um, uh, an infused drink bar. All of this is through gifting. Uh, wow. And they have an instructor uh, who will, you know, teach you how to paint whatever mm-hmm. it is that they're going to nice. paint for that day. Uh, very chill atmosphere. They're having a barbecue. You get a free barbecue plate, um, live music, games. What? It's going to be super fun. It's called Puff, Pass, and Paint. It's on Eventbrite. Mm. Uh, and later, I will put up the flyer. I'll give it to Do Jacob. That. that sounds like a good time. I know. It does sound mm-hmm. like a good time. Um, before we leave out, I want to encourage everyone. I'm going to speak locally now in the DMV. Get out and vote. Oh, I heard that was really low turnout the last time. Oh, my time. God. Like yesterday? Oh, yes. Yo, 8%? Only uh, 8% I heard 16. No. of in Ward 8. Oh, okay. Oh, that's, oh, the, the that's not good. The ward that needs the most. Yeah, yeah. The ward that needs the most, that is critically underserved, yep. did not come out and vote for your constituents. I don't get it. Mm. 8% of voters? That's unfortunate. I wonder why. I wonder, like, what kinds of things we can put into place to make sure we, you know, like, you know, and the like, reasons they were given was just so asinine. Oh, oh it was raining. Oh, it, oh it I mean, you know, <laughs> we do things in the rain. You like, know what I'm saying? It could it's, happen. Exactly. We go to bars in the rain, but we can't vote for our leaders. We have to do better. Yeah. Nationwide, get out and vote in these primaries. The primaries are what sets up the candidates for the next yep. election. Yeah. Yo, you guys have got to get out there and vote. Um, <laughs> but your mom says soccer babies to buy land. Yeah. <laughs> 100,000 for twins, she said. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's crazy. Um, get out and vote. We're going to take a quick break, and I have an, a surprise special guest for you guys today. We're going to come back and interview her, um, and we're going to go pay these bills and come back with Alrighty. more Thursday Night Tea with Anthony and Michelle. Yay. And then it was like I had my own show. It's crazy. <laughs> Thursday night tea, 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 Thursday night tea. Thursday night tea, 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 Thursday, Thursday, Yo, we are back with more Thursday Night Tea. Uh, I don't know why I sing everything. Uh, It is a flaw (laughs) of mine. You know what's uh, so funny? I broke up with someone because they did that. Are you serious? So now you you do it. No, but they, it was literally after every, like, 
you would just say something and they would sing it back to you. Oh, that's annoying. It, <laughs> Michelle. It might be cute at first, but after a while. And it, because he's a singer, a professional singer, so you Ugh. expect it. Mm-hmm. And I'm a very <laughs> tolerant person. And I'm a very patient person because I've been through trials and tribulations. So, right? I, you know, I'm, I'm patient. But you just but, couldn't take it anymore. But you just couldn't take it anymore. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> that's what he would do. Like, okay. Like, okay. It makes yes. it a lot more annoying. <laughs> Yo, I have a special guest. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Nubian Aesthetic. Yeah. What a new world. Spear fingers, jazz hands. Fingers. Yo, how are you today? I'm doing just peachy. Thank how are you. you good. We're good. Thank I'm you for coming. Digging up. those glasses. Thank you so much. You know, much. I enjoy a pair of specs. Yes. And I enjoy those. Thank I actually you. like the whole aesthetic. <laughs> yes. No yes. pun intended. <laughs> I just had a pair that was hand painted, but I had to send those off to Hawaii to a client in Honolulu. Okay. So I'll be Aloha. having a client out Hawaii wearing my artwork. So I'm just very Good. blessed and thankful. Yo, mm-hmm. high five. Thank You're you doing so it way much. Big. Mm-hmm. Where are you from? I'm from Landover, Maryland. Okay. D U B D D. And what made you get into art? To be honest, this just came from being bored in my room, waiting on my mama to finish cooking dinner. So serious. Nice. I got there ripping up fabric, and me and one of my homegirls from high school, we used to make buttons into earrings. Mm-hmm. Like So from there, I'm just like, I'm getting a lot of compliments. I think we should turn this into a business. Mm-hmm. So... So what I kind of art is it? Is it, it just it. is, is it visual? It. Or is that a, you talked about glasses? Is it wearable? Oh, we have it's, pictures. We have... I have... Clothes art, uh, shoe art, nail art. I literally do a plethora of everything. I just nice. had a cannabis neon body paint and fashion show. Yo, so what? it was really all cool. of it. Like it all was just really cool. Look at these images. That is amazing because you do yes. body art, right? Yes. Smoke the runway. Yep. Yeah, that was called Smoke the Runway. Yep. Smoke the That's Runway. That's an amazing concept. <laughs> wow. Where was it held? It was held in Northeast D.C. All right. It was really cool. That's nice. amazing. I love how you didn't give the exact address because that's what you have to do. Only I would know because <laughs> I do shows like that. And people would be like, well, what's the address? I'd be like, Capitol I'll Hill. I'll tell you. <laughs> right. <laughs> With the smile. Yo, it's yep. so funny. Mm-hmm. Your aesthetic is off the chain. Thank you, guys. Off yes. the chain. It's lovely. What, um... So, do you sell online? Do you take custom orders? Yeah, how can I we buy it? I do yeah. both, but literally, you all, my Instagram is like an online boutique. Mm-hmm. So, it, if you're somewhere that's not in the DMV area, that's okay, because I ship worldwide. So, mm-hmm. my Instagram is my website for now until I get one. So, mm-hmm. so we can look and see stuff that we see on your Instagram and say, hey, I want something like that, or I want that, and yes. you can hook like, it up. For example, I have someone that hit me up. If you look closely at my nails, someone wants me to paint a canvas just like this nail. I have to paint a really big canvas. There you go. Like this nail. So I was like, wow, I never. There you go. But that's very detailed, though. Thank you. You did that yourself? Yes. No way. Yes. I smoked two blunts. and You know what? (laughs) Did you do it while they were off or while they were on? I did it while they were on. I go to the salon and the nail salon and I have them put the acrylic on mm-hmm. and then I go home and I decorate it Make myself. Them yourself. Because I don't <sighs> want to pay $70 for something that I can do myself and, and it probably better. better. Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm going to put love into it. So I don't know what they're saying while they're doing other people's nails, but it just And there's nothing better than love so. on your fingers, yo. I'm telling and I you. thought this little ombre was hitting on something. Look, I thought That's my little natural look. nails yes. was... <laughs> so I, fashionable. I think that, so. Where do you want to? Where do you? Where are you? Ta- what are your goals? Where are you taking this? My goals. I want to own. Well, let me change that. I will be owning my own art gallery, nail salon, but in a boutique as well, right? But my art gallery is going to be something like you've never seen before. Mm. I don't want to give too much don't, on it honey, because cause... literally the ideas in my head. I've never seen an art gallery like that in my life so Mm -hmm. all right i'm very excited about it artists what i will say about my art gallery is i will have i want a bunch of local artists art gallery in my art gallery i will Mm -hmm. have a wall dedicated to local artists so yep that's a good thing that's a good thing shout Uh out to marcus keith uh, who's watching? I went to I went to see a deaf production of A Raisin in the Sun. Mm. 
It was, I just can't, well, my first and foremost, I auditioned for that role when mm. I was younger, <laughs> but my son, I had too much of a Southern draw mm. because it's, look, it's in Chicago yeah. and they were like, thank you. No, Andy Griffith. No, thank you. <laughs> we don't need you in your Southern draw. But, um, I went to see, it was an amazing production. In my mind, I was trying to like construct what I thought it was going to be like. Mm -hmm. And it was it was kind of like watching, you know, how you watch a movie with subtitles and then you forget that you're reading mm -hmm. and you're not yeah. you're not even paying attention to the words. You're just watching the movie, but you get everything that's that's exactly how it was. And it was it's very wonderful. it was correct. No, for real. I like like I was in there like, you know, and then I was like, well, how it was interesting how they even staged it because. Yeah. For them to go to their cues and notes, if they're not facing the person to turn around, they would tap on the floor and it would allow them to turn around. It was crazy yeah. the things that they did, but it was very enlightening. It was an awesome production. So shout out to Marcus Keith uh, and the troupe that he uh, performed with. Shout out to Chiquita Smiley Tucker, who's also watching. Um, and we thank you guys for tuning in. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, now, where can everyone find you? You all can find me. We talking about like in person. Yeah, to but well to um well the not IG because I'm mobile. Everybody. Okay, I'm mobile, baby. But like your IG and your Facebook, do you have um like oh. a website? I can give you all three things to follow me by. My Snapchat name. You ready? Because the kids love the Snapchat. <laughs> yes, <laughs> everybody loves the Snapchat. <laughs> I meet new clients on there all the time. My Snapchat name is Keonte K E Y O N T A E and Beyonce. Keontae, Beyonce, it's all together. It's one word. I know that's weird. I'm weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nobody has that name. Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. So that's my Snapchat name. And my Facebook name is Kimani Bell. That's K-E-M-O-N-I space B-E-L-L. -L. You know, like Patti LaBelle. Yeah. You know? Hey, and mister, then, how's hey. your daughter? <laughs> <laughs> and my Instagram name is Nubian underscore aesthetics. Wonderful. You can find me there on those three platforms. That's amazing. Wonderful. And look yes. at that. Yes. Look at those aesthetics. boots. Now, those yes. boots were made for walking. Yes. <laughs> Yo, for a few, yes. for, a for nice a few feet, then sit down. Thank you. That top is and sickening. And that's poppy apparel. So make sure you guys tune in on their website and check out their outfits. They have cute, trendy tops like I've never seen before. Cool. Yo, thank you so much for thank sliding through. Thank you guys through. for having me. You like, are gifted, very, and your you. gifts will make room for you. Thank you, guys. That's Seriously. right. Your kind of words of motivation. Really we're going to me. take a quick break, and we're going to come back with my favorite funny lady, Michelle. Sometime Sweet. she's going to rip up the stage for you guys. Yay. Stay tuned for more Thursday Night Tea yes, with will. Anthony. <laughs> Oh my God, it's like I woke up and I was a comedian. And then it was like I had my own show. It's crazy. Y'all have a super hilarious comedian. Yo, she's going to have you in stitches. We perform together all the time. She runs several rooms here in D.C., so you have to go check her out. Ladies and gentlemen, give a warm round of applause for Michelle Sometimes. Hello. Hello. I um, 
just wanted to tell a bit of a story. I, um, uh, we talked about um, Anthony's aunt who passed away and the funeral was today, and it got me thinking um, about my grandfather. I lost my last living grandparent recently, and, um, uh, and it would have been a sadder situation if black people didn't make funerals so damn joyous, have you ever been to a black person's funeral? Okay, so this, I'm gonna set the stage. My grandfather was the first black mayor of Paulsboro, New Jersey. Yes, and he was the first black uh, leader of the uh, director of the Maritime Union under the AFL-CIO. And I tell you this not just because I'm super proud of my grandfather, which I am, but also, there was a whole bunch of people that I didn't know at my grandfather's funeral. And the pastor was like showing off. It's like he was trying to do something like, you know, like the voice, but for pastors. Like he was like performing. It was complete performance. And so he started getting, he came up and was, did the eulogy for my grandfather. And I am going to reenact that eulogy for you right now. So he did this like whole long transportation metaphor. So here he goes. <clears throat> Uh, Brother Hamp, that's what I called him, because he was my friend. Brother Hamp, he went on to glory. Yes, he did. He got a one-way ticket to the pearly gates. He did not have any layovers. It was a direct shot. Yes, he did. He got on the silver line to talk to Angel Gabriel. He got his ticket validated and got on the road. And he keeps going with this whole transportation thing. And then he's like, and then I saw Brother Hamp. I saw him in the hospital. And I saw a smile come across his face. And I knew he was talking to Jesus. I knew that he was talking to the Lord. I knew that he showed him he got his ticket validated because that's the kind of man he was. And he was talking to the Lord. And he had a big smile on his face and smiling and talking about my grandfather. And yes, he did. There was no bumpy trips. Uh. He got right to the gates. Uh. And he had that smile on his face. Uh. And I was like, hey, wait a second. This guy is too happy. Did he just kill my grandpa? Is that what's happening right now? So difficult. <laughs> and that's so funerals can be happy. Cool. Clearly, he was having a great time. Um, what else am I talking about? Oh, I was just talking about funeral, but I'm going to talk to you about um, something else. I'm going to talk to you about a breakup that I had. And that also was super sad because he texted me and told me that he didn't want to see me anymore. And uh, that also was very sad uh, because I wanted to do that shit first. Have you ever been in a relationship you just overlook so many things? Let me just say the things that I overlooked because forget him, he texted me. I'm going to tell everybody, I'm going to tell the world. First thing I overlooked was his breath. It was so bad. It was so bad, I thought he was going to give my vagina gingivitis. <gasps> and then, but see, I have a blind spot, and my blind spot is home ownership, because the way my savings account is set up, that may never happen for me. So I overlooked so many things. So then I also overlooked um, what? Oh, there's a thing. It's kind of gross to me, but I'm going to, maybe I'm just a nerd. So when he did go downtown, he used to spit on my vagina. Is that a thing? I think so. Ah! And there's always one person like, yes, yeah, spitting's my jam. I <laughs> don't like that. I, don't, I feel like it's wet down there already. And if it's not, that's your fault. That's your fault. <laughs> don't bring your spit into it. But his house did have like a fenced in backyard, like a split level. I could move my kids in. I would never need to see them again. Um, but I noticed that he wasn't uh, texting me and calling me as often. Uh, we wouldn't go out a lot. Uh, we would just stay in the house. Um, and then I started to think, 
is this dude giving me big dick attitude with a little ass dick? Is that what's happening right now? Is that what's happening? Like, you do not have the girth nor the inches to treat me so shampily. Yeah. So the next time you are in an sl- argument with your loved one, <laughs> you just tell them, you do not have the girth nor the inches to choose where we go to dinner. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. I'm saying all <laughs> that. That's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get me beat up. That's it, right? No, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. That's, that's bad. That's bad. Um, I believe my five minutes is up. But I have one more minute. One more minute. One more minute. Okay, I'm gonna tell tell you one last story about uh, street harassment. Do we love it? You guys do it? Mm-hmm. See something you like on the street and whoop, yep. Yeah. Uh, it's terrible. I don't like it, but it works for somebody because they keep doing it. One time I was in a, a parking lot. And I was uh, uh, walking to the grocery store. I parked my car, walking to the grocery store. There was a car that was coming up next to me. And it was um, a car. It was like a late model Crown Vic with dark tinted windows. And I was like, oh, that's creepy. Because I feel like the only difference between sexual harassment and flirtation is a creepiness factor. <laughs> so it was a late model Crown Vic with dark tinted windows with the window slowly coming down. I'm like, oh, my gosh. That's creepy. The last time I saw that, like, Doughboy was running for his life. <laughs> Okay, y'all are too young. There is a movie <laughs> by the name of The Boys in the Hood where there is a drive-by. Okay. Anyway, it was creepy. Ricky! Okay, creepy. So he pulls out the window and goes, like, hey, Miss Lady, Miss Lady. And I kept walking. He says it again. Hey, Miss Lady, Miss Lady. I kept walking. He says again, hey, Miss Lady, you so beautiful. And then I turned around. Cuts facts. And I said, thank you. And he's like, um, I just wanted to ask you if you would like me to take you to dinner. And so what do we say when we don't want to make the guy too mad, but we're going to tell him that um, I have a... Prior engagement. Yes, a prior engagement or a boyfriend. I said, um, uh, 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 um, I can't. I have killed before. Um, <laughs> but it didn't... I'm just kidding. I said I had a boyfriend. And um, he was like, but hey, hey, they would have left, right? Hey, that would have left. So he said, I didn't see a ring on that finger, so I had to shoot my shot. I had to say what's up. So you tell that boyfriend that he needs to put a ring on that finger. So I thought, like, should I go home and have a uh, conversation with my uh, made-up boyfriend about how he won't put a ring on that finger or... You know, I just jumped in the car. Uh, we went to Olive Garden. <laughs> We're dating now. Uh, he has a, his own town home. That's what it is. My name is Michelle Sometimes. That's my Give daughter. it up for Michelle, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Yo, funerals are crazy, though. So I just insane. feel like they always run out of um, flyer, like the uh, programs. Yes. I'm like, dude, I'm the first one here. How are you, how are you out of programs? Who did you give it to? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> so Yo, come on up here, um, Nubian. Yo, we have, um, give these ladies a round of applause for the yes. show today. We had an amazing show. We have uh, Nubian Aesthetics. We have Michelle Sometimes. Where can they find you on Instagram one more time? Nubian underscore Aesthetics. All right, there we go. And Michelle, where can yes. we find you? I'm sorry. Yes, if you go to um, <laughs> Michelle Sometimes on Instagram, Michelle with one L on Instagram, you will find me. Also, you should go to F Facebook for um, follow Brainy Girl Productions. This Sunday, there is a brunch called Black Card Decline. We're going to have brunch, and then we're going to ask the audience and comedians questions about black culture, and you can win all sorts of amazing prizes. Yeah, the show is off the chain. All of Super her fun. shows are off the chain. Super fun. All of them. Thank you guys for tuning in for <laughs> Thursday Night Tea with Anthony. Stay tuned. Next week we have an amazing show where Nikki will be here. Um, yo, sex off toys, the chain, sex toys in the house, sex toys in the house. <laughs> Stay tuned for more Thursday night tea with Anthony. Anthony. Listen, vision, listen, vision, listen, vision. Listen, vision. DC's number one recording studio. Oh. Thursday night tea. Thursday night tea. Thursday night tea. It's Thursday Night Tea with Anthony. Thursday Night Tea.